Chapter 57 The Seer Stone They followed the corridor for some time, until they turned a corner and found themselves in a different type of corridor. It was wider, better lit, and had a tiled floor rather than the bare stone of the corridor they had been following. Looking around, there was no sign of the corner they had turned. I can feel it now, the pull of the token, Lydia explained. He's telling us we need to go upwards. Lydia, if we have to fight the guards, I believe we will have to use our wands, Dev warned. I'm afraid you are right, Dev, Lydia agreed. Are you okay with that, Freddy? Try not to hurt them, just stun or petrify. Freddy and Dev nodded. If I may make a wee suggestion, came Xander's voice from inside Lydia's rucksack. I could scout ahead. If we are lucky, some of them might be Maron cultists who wish to worship me. I wouldn't expect adulation if I were you, Xander, Dev warned. Sadly, no, Xander agreed. I cannot assume I will receive the reception I deserve. Xander padded off ahead of them, his tail swaying confidently as he walked. They followed at a distance. At a junction in the corridor, Xander froze and crept backwards. He returned to the others. There are a couple of guards to the right ahead, he told them. They look to be guarding a stairway. You ready with your wands? Once we use magic, we don't know what that will bring down on us, courtesy of the Watcher, Lydia warned. I thought we could save it until we were almost on top of the token. Allow me to try a diversion, Xander said. I shall run past them and see if they follow. What if they don't? Dev asked. Then I'll shout at them from along the far end of the corridor, Xander said. That should get them moving. Xander disappeared around the corner. A little later, they heard the guards talking about a cat which had run past them. A few seconds after that, they heard Xander calling obscenities at the guards from further up the passage. There was a clatter as the two guards gave chase. They peered around the corner. No guards were to be seen. They tiptoed along the corridor to the archway that the armoured men had been guarding. It was a stairway, as Xander had suspected. They were neither straight nor the usual type spiral, but curved gently, following the outer wall of the tower. Xander reappeared part of the way up. How did you manage with the guards? Lydia asked. They met with an unfortunate accident, Xander said. What kind of accident? Lydia asked. One which I would Characterise as unfortunate, Sander said. Unfortunate for them, not so bad for us, thankfully. Lydia stopped and scowled at Sander. Are they hurt? Imagine they fell down a flight of stairs, Sander suggested. Did they? Lydia asked. Yeah, why not? Sander replied. Anyway, I should away up to the next landing, see if the coast is clear. At least we are not using magic, Dev pointed out. Go on, Lydia conceded. Xander sprang ahead and disappeared around the corner. They stopped and waited. There came a loud roar and a clatter of metal that made them jump. Then there was silence. Xander padded back down the stairs. Cost is clear. As they ascended the stairs, a bell sounded in the distance. Another bell took up their call. The alarm spread through the citadel. Eh, guess they found the bodies, Xander muttered as they ran. Shouting came from behind Lydia's group as they passed the exit to the next floor. Halfway to the level after that, they heard shouts from above. One's out, Lydia snarled. We're not going to get through any other way. I wish the others were here, said Freddy. It's a hate to miss out, Dev agreed. They ran on. Lydia could feel the call of the token. She could see it in her mind's eye at the top of the tower. Two guards emerged from a side entrance. Petrificus Totalus! Freddy squeaked. The guards dropped onto the stairs. One slid down a few metres, armour scraping on the steps. Nicely done, Freddy! Lydia called. They carried on towards the next landing. Four guards leapt out of doorway, squaring themselves to block the running youngsters. Stunning spells flashed. The soldiers slumped to the floor. Dev whooped with delight. Oh, come on now, Zander said. 
Using magic on muggles is like shooting fish in a barrel for you guys. They sprang forward again, onward to the next level. More guards, more stunning spells. Another floor, another squad stunned. Freddy was panting from running now. It surprised Lydia to see how well Dev was coping. He was more physically fit than she had expected. They ploughed through the guards on another three levels. Each confrontation, though easily tackled, held them up briefly. They could hear the sounds of pursuit behind them. They came to the last level. The stairs curved more tightly here. Ahead of them was a heavy wooden door. Alohomora! Lydia's incantation rang out. She pulled on the great iron ring which served as the door handle. The door swung open. Guards shouted from behind them. They bundled into the room, pulling the door shut. With a wave of her hand, Lydia tried to turn the door to stone. It crackled. Some of the wood splintered and flaked, falling to the floor, but nothing else happened. Petri Portus, Dev called out. This time, the door disappeared, replaced by a stone wall. I thought that might be more effective than collar Portus, Dev explained. They will have to knock down the masonry to get in. You've been amazing, Dev, Freddy said, panting. You've really held it together. I was worried it'd be too much for you, all this action and reality and stuff. I mean, because I'm a bit of a worrier, like Oddie. Yeah, but he's risen to the occasion too, Freddy said. I think when you've spent your life thinking through every worst-case scenario, Dev mused, you feel you have training for things like this to happen. Then you just get on with it. See if you can find this seer stone, Lydia ordered. The room they were in opened onto a balcony. The streaming sunshine lit some of the area, throwing the rest into deep shadows. They could see bookshelves, loaded with scrolls, benches cluttered with small objects, and pieces of furniture clad in dust covers. The herb-laden air of Shakiko wafted in from the open balcony. Go round, Lydia suggested. Here it is, Freddy chirped, pointing to one of the bench tops. You need to pick it up and give it to Dev, Lids. The stone was a lilac crystal globe on an ornate wooden stand. Let's not rush, Lydia said, walking over to the bench. What? Freddy questioned. Pass it on and we can get out of here. No, she said, taking the stone in both hands. Dev, you said this thing sees things over great distances, and even into the future. So Quinn told me, Dev admitted. But that was just rumour and legend. They see, she insisted. This could help us find the next token in record time. Could help us against the Watcher. He could win this bloody quest for us. I'm concerned, Lydia, Dev warned. This is a token. It needs to be sent back like the others. Why, though? Lydia challenged. What's Ambrose doing with them? Why does it have to go straight back? We could just use this one to help us, then send it back, couldn't we? Get an advantage? You would have to learn how to operate it, Dev protested. Do we really have time for that? I won't know until I... Lydia began. Dev grabbed the token from Lydia's hands and promptly disappeared. Corbin appeared in his place with his rucksack ready over one shoulder. What is up with the wall? Corbin asked. Lydia and Freddy turned to see that dust was spilling from the joints around one stone in the wall. We should probably think about getting out of here, Corbin suggested. Sounds like they're chiseling their way through, said Freddy, his ear against the wall. We're at the top of a tower, in the middle of a city, Lydia briefed Corbin. Freddy, we'll go out on the balcony, jump off and use Arresto Momentum to stop us hitting whatever's beneath. Are you both okay with the spell? Corbin nodded. Freddy grimaced. They moved out onto the balcony. Yeah, sorry, Lydia said. You said before the gate where you weren't confident. Corbin, could you look after Freddy? I'll go first, so you can see where we're going to land. She walked to the balustrade and put down her rucksack for Xander to climb in. She looked down on the city below. If we go to this end, we should land either in the garden courtyard, Lydia said. See, down there, Corbin, or we'll land on the roof of the covered walkways. It's a quick climb down into the courtyard, then we run towards the far end. There's an arcade corridor which takes us to the entrance. We'll probably have to fight our way out, but they're all muggles. Just stun the guards and go. Oh. I don't suppose you've packed a broom in your rucksack, Corbin? 
No, sorry, he apologised. Never mind, Lydia shrugged. I've got mine, but that's not enough for all of us. With luck, we'll meet up with the others and escape together. What about the Watcher, Lids? Freddy asked. We've used magic, he'll send something after us. I know, she cried. I tried to use old magic to turn the door into a wall. It didn't work. Dev had to do it. I'm down to using high magic like you guys. We'll all have... There was a crash as the first stone block in the wall, where the door had been, fell to the floor. Shit! Lydia exclaimed. I'll jump. Watch me and follow. She climbed up onto the balustrade and prepared to make the leap, wand in hand. There was a rush of wind, and something huge blocked out the daylight as it swept past. Lydia was gone. Freddy sprang to the balustrade and looked down. Corbin grabbed his arm and pointed to their right. A dragon was soaring into the distance. A tiny figure clasped in its talons.